Have you ever wondered exactly how someone rides a unicycle? Well, in this video, I will be explaining how balancing on a unicycle works and how the wheel and crank size makes a difference. This is the physics of unicycling. While riding a unicycle, there are three main forces acting upon the rider and the unicycle. With any object, gravity is always pulling down on it. As long as the unicycle is touching the ground, there will be a normal force pushing back up at the point of contact. The unicycle also needs friction to move. The unicycle is always in unstable equilibrium. This means that when I'm upright, I will stay upright, but if I start to lean, I will fall. <coughs> this can be fixed by understanding your center of gravity and a motion called countersteering. All objects behave as though their mass is concentrated at a point called their center of gravity. Your body's center of gravity is slightly higher than your waist because there's more weight in the top half of your body than in the bottom half. Countersteering is changing the point of contact of the unicycle and is used when trying to turn, speed up, and slow down. If I want to turn, I use countersteering to turn in the opposite direction, so then my center of gravity is offset from the unicycle, allowing me to make the turn more smoothly. If I want to change my speed, I simply lean forward to accelerate and lean backwards to slow down. This forces my pedaling to either catch up with my body or slow down. This is also where inertia comes in. My body has enough inertia that if I start to feel myself tipping, I will have enough time to lean the other way to cancel it out. So why does the wheel size matter? Well generally, the bigger the wheel, the faster you are able to move. With the generic unicycle, for every revolution of the cranks, there is one revolution of the wheel. Changing the size of the tire is the most effective way to change the speed, because the greater the circumference, the greater the distance per revolution. There is, however, another way of making it easier to reach faster speeds on a unicycle, the size of the cranks. We can look at a simple machine to determine how the size of the crank relates to how easy it is to go faster. The relationship between the wheel and the cranks can be looked at as an example of a wheel and axle. The size of the crank is measured by its length, so the size of the crank will act as the radius of the axle. The mechanical advantage of this system will determine how much work is needed for different sizes of cranks and wheels. The mechanical advantage is the ratio of the output force to the input force. But since measuring the forces can often be difficult, we can use the ideal mechanical advantage, which is the ratio of the input distance to the output distance. We also know that work is equal to the force times distance, and ignoring friction, the ideal mechanical advantage should equal the mechanical advantage. If we look at my unicycle, my cranks are 125 millimeters. That makes the input distance 0.125 meters. The output distance is about 0.254 meters because the radius of my wheel is roughly 10 inches. This means that the ideal mechanical advantage is roughly one half. Let's say the input force is six newtons. Mechanical advantage and ideal mechanical advantage should be the same, which makes the output force three newtons. Now we can find the work that is put into the machine. So we multiply the input force by the input distance to get 0.75 joules of work. Now, what if the cranks were, say, 80 millimeters? The input distance then changes to 0.08 meters. If the wheel size stays the same and our input force is 6 newtons, the output force would now be closer to 2 newtons. If we multiply the input force and distance, we now get 0.48 joules of work. With the 125 millimeter cranks, there was 0.75 joules of work, and with the 80 millimeter cranks, there was 0.48 joules of work. So basically, with the same amount of force put into pedaling, it takes less work when riding the shorter cranks because there is less distance that your feet have to travel even though the whole unicycle is still going the same distance. This is why shorter cranks allow you to ride at faster speeds. Well this video made unicycling seem super simple didn't it? But seriously, riding a unicycle is not that hard with enough practice. So hopefully now you know basically how one works and were inspired to try riding one.